How's it going guys? Once again, welcome back to Pokemon TCG Center. In today's video, we'll be looking at a deck for the standard format, and this is the um, West Between Zorark Evolution, uh, featuring some of the latest cards from the Sun and Moon, actually um, pretty cool cards from the Sun and Moon. So let's take a look at the deck by itself. 25 um, Pokemon cards, 31 trainer cards, and 4 energies, only double course energies in this build. First thing you should gonna notice, there's no Hex Mania, yeah. That's the good notice. So I'm not running Hex Maniac simply because I decided not to go with the Hex Maniac. Um, simply because I'm running Flareon. If I'm gonna use Hex Maniac, then I will shut down my um, evolution abilities. Um, Hex Maniac can be tech, that's for sure. Also, um, Taurus can be substituted with the Mew, for example, or even you can discard simply Superode uh, in addition to. Hex Maniac or Taurus GX, but uh, later on with the Super Road, why I'm running uh, Super Road in the deck. So, first thing we should see uh, a Pokemon list. Two Eevees with the Energy Evolution. Um, you can even run another Eevee, but it's the same. This one can actually drop you extra card if you start with him. Um, it has to retreat cost, so it really doesn't matter if it's one or two, just because we're running double course energies. If we want to retreat that EV, we're gonna need to pay double course energy retreat cost. One of each Flareon, um, Jolteon, and Vaporeon from the Asian Origins with that ability, Aqua Effect, um, electric, electric Effect, and of course, a Fire Effect uh, for the extra um, energy type uh, on our um, West Between or Zorark, which is very important because we can simply attack for five different um, weakness types for fire, lighting, water, darkness, and grass. On the other hand, I'm also running one copy of Ranguru with the Instruct because it's pretty good for the late game. Simply because after your opponent um, and you down to one card or two, you can simply use the advantage of the Instruct and draw cards that only have three in your hand. Two Shamus for the setup, um, two copies of Zorua and Zorark for the stand-in and the Mind Jack. I really like the Mind Jack because if our opponent have five or six Pokemons on his disc uh, on his bench, we can simply go for 150, 160, and depending on how many he have on the bench with Professor Kukui even more. 4-4 four, four line of the combi and West Between for the Beat Revenge, of course. Um, four copies of Anon for the Fireball Letter, extra one card to be drawn with the Fireball Letter and extra um, 10 damage counters with the um, Beat Revenge. And one copy of Mew EX to counter those Mega Mew 2 decks for the one hit knock with the Mew EX. I completely forget that we can actually strike for six different weakness types. That's just insane. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Mew can also be substitute. Uh, for example, with the Taurus GX, but I don't prefer to run Taurus just because I'm not running Fighting Fury Belt. Mew is just here simply because he can counter Mega Mew too. I mean, Taurus can also be good with that GX attack, but still, hey, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. It can definitely be good attack, but I decided not to run it, for now at least. Um, item, li item line, uh, 4 copies of Acrobikes, look at the two, two cards if your um, deck, put one in your hand, discard the other one, it can help us a lot to um, go through our deck pretty quick, especially with the Anons and Shames and uh, Instructs with the Uraguru. Uh, escape Rope, always good to have, I really like it because uh, from nowhere you can force your opponent maybe to promote uh, EX Pokemon in the active position and you can simply uh, draw two prize cards instead of the one. Um, two copies of Revital Laser, um, simply uh, you can put two Grass Pokemons from your Disco Pile back into your hand so we can have that West Between Line in just a single turn. Uh, two Special Charge, very important to have because we're running only four Double Cores Energies. In case one is priced, we can't get access to another Double Cores Energy, so Double Special Charge makes a lot of sense. Super Road, <sighs> you're probably gonna ask yourself, why in the world would you run Super Road in a West Between deck? You're not running basic energy cards, you don't simply need Super Road. Um, okay, so there's a theory, in my opinion, why I'm running Super Road in this build. Um, Super Road, uh, let's say, first you're gonna notice that I'm also running one copy of Pearl City in this build. Super Road is here for the fact that you can simply in the late game uh, get recover uh, with the Shamans. Simply because you can, uh, in the early game, Pearl City your Shamans out of the play from your bench. And then you can recycle them back with the Super Road, and in the late game, uh, after you, your opponent and you down to uh, very low uh, limited resources, with the Instruct you can simply draw Shaman and you can simply set up Shamans again and get uh, necessary cards for the victory. It helps me a lot of time and trust me, I really like it. 
If you don't like the Super Road, if you really want to more rely on the Hex Maniac or Tauros, you can simply substitute Super Road for any of these two cards, but this is just up to you. Um, overall, I didn't find Hex Maniac that important in this build. If you're gonna play against Wildplum the CGI, um, if your opponent managed to item lock your turn one, that Hex Maniac will not change things too much. That's just my personal opinion and uh, it's just a single card from 60 cards in your deck, so you, it also needs to be drawn. Um, if it's priced, it's priced. Uh, four copies of Ultra Balls, four copies of VS Seekers, of course, and Stadium Decision was three Forest and John Plants and one Pearl City. Uh, I simply like the Pearl City because I really want to get rid of my Shamans uh, or even Mew from the bench, so my opponent can take two prize cards instead of just one. Um, support line, of course, one copy of Lysander, um, switch one of your opponent bench tokens with his or an active Pokemon. Decided to go just simply with one copy of N. Um, it's a little bit risky, but trust me, um, we really don't want to get N in a late game. Of course, if we have very limited resource to be drawn um, from our deck, N can definitely be a better decision um, than Sycamore, but still, Super Road for Shamans can be much better than just playing N in the late game. And that's the reason why I'm only running one copy of M. I mean, you can also run two copies, so you can have six draft supporters, but uh, with so many acrobikes and unknowns uh, and instruct and uh, setups, we simply don't need that many supporter cards uh, for draw, in my opinion. Uh, one copy of Pokemon Ranger, remove all effects uh, of attacks on each player's and uh, his or her active Pokemon, so simply here for the Giratina, uh, because um, Giratina can be so badly, but also Glacier Crystal Ray can be uh, pretty devastating for this build. Professor Skokui for extra 20 damage and uh, extra two cards to be drawn at the turn that uh, he's played. I really like it. Same as four copies of Professor Sycamore, but as I mentioned it earlier, you can even cut one Sycamore in, in addition to second, uh, second N. Up to you, up to you. I much more prefer to discard my entire hand instead of just shuffling back unnecessary cards into my deck and then drop them again. Um, it's just insane and crazy. Uh, one copy of Flowstone and four copies, of course, of double colors energies uh, for the um, West Between Zorark attack. Overall, I really like the deck. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, it's pretty cool to play. So if you didn't play with it, you should definitely build it. Uh, you can simply import it by clicking here on this deck icon um, with these five icons. And you can simply import it uh, in your a TCGO and uh, if you have all necessary cards you can play with them. If you're looking for any of these cards in the real life you can actually uh, buy them on ccgcast.com with TCG Center file code. You can also get 5% discount on your purchase. Uh, you can find the link in my video description so make sure to check that. I actually didn't uh, make the... Uh, I actually stayed uh, wrong. Um, you can copy... I can actually copy my deck list here but uh, you simply need to copy uh, and import uh, from uh, my video description deck list, important here, and you will have it in your uh, TCGO. So let's do some game tests so you can actually see this deck in action. So see you in the game. All right, so starting first, looking at my opening hand, I can say that I that I'm not happy. I can definitely tell that there's just. Anomaly is the worst possible start definitely you can get with this build. If there's something like um, Sky Arrow Bridge in play, well then Anomaly would make a lot of sense because even if you start with it you can simply switch it for free, but then you can evolve your Vesper Queens for example on your turn one, so yeah, not that good. Um, let's go with 1N. Let's go with the 1N. Um, I like the fact that I actually have the Flowstone sitting in my hand, so I'm gonna play Ultra Ball for Sycamore and Forest and the John Plants, and grab that Zorua, put it down to the bench, put a Flowstone on it, and uh, simply pass my turn. Kingdra EX on the other side with the Big Storm, discard any Stadium card in play, and uh, deal 20 damage. That's pretty dope, because I'm actually gonna need my stadium cards, but hey, it is how it is. One Ultra Ball on the other side. One Lighting, one Water Energy discarded, uh, probably it's gonna be for Shaman. Yeah, it is. 
Demon of Hoopa makes a lot of sense in this deck, uh, simply because you can set up your Kingdras and Shamans, but uh, the problem with the deck is that you simply need to rely on your Magnezone uh, line, because Magnezone with the Magnetic Circuit is the one who can actually um, attach energies to your Kingdra in play. So, as long as there's going to be Kingdra, I'm going to be limited uh, with discarding my Stadium from play, so I need to be very smart playing my Stadium, that's for sure. On the other side, I'm taking 20 damage counters to the Anon. I have the Seeker for another round of the end, probably, but uh, I'm I'm just looking maybe even to go. Uh, there's Seeker for seven. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna go with my end, simply because I don't want to discard special charge in such an early stage of the game without even being able to use it. So there's the King draw number two for my opponent, and uh, will that be it? We shall see. I mean, he have um, hand with six cards. In it, so I don't see a reason why I wouldn't just um, oh nice nice top deck. Why I wouldn't just simply be a seeker for M. Okay, so there's um, Eevee, another Combi, and a Flareon. So I'm just gonna discard Jolteon and. Flareon, and it's gonna be for one Shaman EX. If you ask me why I didn't attach my double course energy to Zerua, the answer is simple because I really want to keep my Zerua for later. Hmm, Acrobike. Alright, so another Acrobike. Double course energy. Looks like I'm gonna miss. Looks like I'm gonna miss this turn, my Zorark. That's not something good. Never mind. Um, four Pokemon in my disco pile. Only four Pokemon in my disco pile. Uh, Floatstone number two. And this is the one for the uh, artillery. I mean, I enjoy playing the game when I actually play a game for like 15 20 minutes. I don't like when you manage to set up turn 1 and when the game is over in turn 2, turn 3, or when the game is decided uh, in the game 1 or game uh, in the turn 1 or on turn 2. So I'm more like uh, to play and enjoy playing the game uh, when you actually uh, set up the uh, same as your opponent and when you need to calculate what your, what, what's, your, what's your next step, uh, what's good to do, what's not good to do. Uh, pushing the deck to the limits, let's say something like that. So, Dragon Trail, 60 plus 30 more for each basic energy attached to Kingdra. The good thing about my Zorark is that he can right now go for like 130, with Professor Skukui for 150, but that's still not enough for the one he knocked against Kingdra. Even worse, if there's gonna be something like a Fighting Fury Belt, then Kingdra would have 210 HP. Big Storm for the 20 only, so he decided not to go for the knockout. That's kind of interesting. I'm taking huge step with Sycamore here. I know it wasn't the best Professor Sycamore that I could do, but still, hey, I can go for like 160 right now. I'm gonna discard my Anon and my Pearl City here for that Zorark. Then I can just simply stand in. I can discard my Anum with that Farwell Leather. What I can top deck is just a Super Road. What type of the, of the resource I can recycle with my Super Oat? Um, nothing's pretty special right now, so let's just go with the Mind Jack for 160. A huge 106, unfortunately, short for 10 for the knockout, for the one hit knockout with the Zorark, so... If there's gonna be at least one more energy, um, lighting energy on his Kingdra, that attack will be enough for them. Actually, even without lighting energy, it's going to be enough for another. But he simply need that lighting energy in order to even perform the knockout against my Zorark. So, a Beazle Hand for 3. 
Of course, once I manage to nax out his uh, Magnuson on the bench, the game is going to be over. But even before that, I can simply take six prize cards, just knocking out those Kindreds and Shamans. Okay, so there's a Lysander. There's two more double cores energies and special charge sitting in my hand. Mm, that's interesting. Magnetic circuit, of course, is going to be knockout on my Sora arc. There we go. Um, Lysander with the trainer's mail. No right. Right now I know that he actually have access to the Lysander in his hand for next turn. So speaking about that, I'm gonna need knockout against Magneso. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Pokemon in my disco pile. Ten, eleven with the Zorark. Twelve, thirteen with the Fear Revenge. So I can go for 130 damage counters with my Fear Revenge. Okay, if he miss opportunity to set up his second Kingdra, I think I'm gonna try somehow to perform the one hit knock against the Magnuson on my turn that is just coming right now. Still for that, I'm gonna need one more Pokemon in my Discord pile. Professor's Kukui will not apply simply because... Ah, Professor's Kukui top deck. You gotta be kidding me. All right, never mind. I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play Professor's Kukui. I'm not gonna set up my Vaporeon in play, but I'm just gonna Sky Return. That Sky Return is gonna be more than enough for the knockout. I will get two prize cards, two huge cards, um, Revit Laser and Ultra Ball, and of course I'm gonna promote my combi in the front. Since I was short for like 10, I couldn't go for the knockout. As you can see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, 11. I could go for like 130 max against his Magnezone, so that wouldn't be enough for the Naga with my um, Wespiquin. On the other side, I can simply nox out two copies of Octillaries and one Shaman for the victory, so I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna go on the other side um, to win, um, not by knocking out his Kingdress by but, but by knocking out his shames and the uh, auxiliaries of the bench. Okay, so the next turn I'm gonna go with one Revital Laser, I'm gonna pick one West Between line from the Disco Pile, put it down to the bench, um, simply just go for the VA Seeker and the knocker against his Shaman. And of course I will try to discard as many cards as I can also. Not sure if there's gonna be something like Anne or maybe Lysander in this case. Um, looks like he is actually short for uh, energy attachment. Well, if there's not gonna be enough energies for my opponent, this is not gonna be good. Uh, there's a Lysander. There's the Lysander, but will there be... Um, okay, a Beasle Hand for one. Can he manage to get one more uh, Lighting Energy for the knockout against my Queen? If not, that's that's not gonna be good. Big Storm just for 20. Really, it's a big storm, but... I'm talk decking pretty good card, which is another B. Um, another Queen, so Revital Laser for another uh, Queen. And of course, right now, I'm just looking forward to discard some of the resources from my hand. So I can simply grab one more combi. Lysander for Shaman. Special charge for double cores energy. One more combi on the bench. And simply be revenge for the knockout. Alright, 130. 
Two more prize cards, Acrobike and Zorark. 130, 140, 150, 160, and uh, okay, so I need just Professor Sigmor. Of course, if there's not going to be a Fighting Fury Belt for my opponent. I also have Double Core's Energy sitting in my hand, but the most importantly for me is that I have a Rangru on my bench, so even if the end happens, it's not going to be that huge. So one Nest Ball for opponent. Uh, well, let's see what he can pick up with the Nest Ball. Uh, nothing. So he is just trying to discard cards from his hand in order to get that um, Abyssal hand going on. Second Nest Ball. Again for nothing. I don't like those Nest Balls. I don't know why. I mean, they are good, but still. Uh, one Magnemite and it's going to be a Abyssal hand for two. So he desperately trying to find, maybe even M, maybe even M, M can be huge here, definitely, but still, after he ends me and knocks out my Wespy Queen, I can go for like 150, which means that I can simply attach, I can simply have another Wespy Queen on my bench, oh, there's a Fisherman, and uh, with V Seeker for um, something like Professor Skukui, I can win the game, because I'm not seeing Fighting Fury Belts on those Kingdras. Finding Fury Belt is very important card for this build, and I I don't know why my opponent don't, don't have a single Finding Fury Belt in this deck. Because Finding Fury Belt could help a lot in this situation. So there's another um, energy with the Magnet Zone, and of course you want to attach a couple more energies to your um, Kingdra on the bench. I mean, he could also, for example, um, retreat his Kingdra and knock me out with his Magnezone. In that case, I would need something like... Uh, in that case, I would need something like Lysander for the victory. And in my opinion, that might be even better, uh, better idea than attacking with a Kingdra. Still because I can go for the victory this turn uh, with my uh, Queen. So Dragon Trail, it's gonna be for 150, uh, more than enough for the knockout, so my opponent is taking only one price here. And right now I have 150, huge 150 damage counters available to attack. What I can find with the Acrobike, I can find Forest of the John Plants. I can put another West McQueen in play, and I can set up my Shaman for 4. So, there's a V-Seeker for the Lysander, oh no for the Lysander, for how many Pokemon? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13, 150, let's go with the Sycamore for 7. Alright, so the B Revenge for the knockout against Kingdra for 180, but definitely if there was no, um, if there was actually Fighting Fury Belt on those Kingdras, I wouldn't have so easy time knocking them out, so I would probably just license his artillery on the bench and knock him out, or even better, uh, Magnezone. But overall I'm kind of confused and I'm not sure why my opponent didn't run um, Fighting Fury Belts in his deck. But overall guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video once again. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. As always, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave comments below. So stay tuned for the next video. Have a nice day wherever you are and uh, goodbye.